Okay guys, welcome back. Abel Om here. Uh, today we're going to do a little bit of music theory. This is the first real music theory lesson because it's necessary. Now that we're talking about scales, not just arpeggios, we're talking about different notes in the key. Now today I'm showing the example of a chord progression, not really a progression, it's just two chords, A minor and C major. Now the reason we're using A minor and C major is because they share the same notes. The notes in a C major scale there's no sharps or flats, so it's really easy to remember. It's C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, okay? And the notes in an A minor scale, also very easy to remember. No sharps or flats, you start on A instead of C, so it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, right? We're gonna do a tiny bit of review because on the last video, I showed you a lot of pentatonic information right away. It might have been confusing, but let's talk about it. We're going to play A minor. One way of playing A minor is the 6th string bar chord on the 5th fret. That's an A minor. And you guys learned that the minor pentatonic, I don't like calling it that, but the first position pentatonic is 1, 4, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 4. Starting on that 5th fret. So that's 5, 8, 5, 7, 5, 7, 5, 7, 5, 8, 5, 8. Now, the second position, you slide up to the next place where that first one ended, so it ended on 8, and that would be 8, 10, 7, 10, 7, 10, 7, 9, 8, 10, 8, 10, right? The third position, we slide up to where that one ended, so we're starting right here, 10, 12, 10, 12, 10, 12, 9, 12, 10, 13, 10, 12. That would be the third position of this minor pentatonic scale. The fourth position was on the 12th fret. It went to 12, 15, 12, 15, 12, 14, 12, 14, 13, 15, 12, 15. And the final, the fifth position, starts on the 15th fret. 15, 17, 15, 17, 14, 17, 14, 17, 15, 17, 15, 17. 15, 17, 15, 17. At this point, we're starting over on that first position again. 1, 4, 1, 3, 1, 3, etc. Or you can say uh, 17, 20, 17, 19, 17, 19, 17, 19, 17, 20, 17, 20, right? Now, I will point out that up here, we're just repeating what's down here. So the fifth position was on this 15th fret. It's also on this third fret. 3, 5, 3, 5, 2, 5, 2, 5, 3, 5, 3, 5, okay? In case anyone's confused about that, once you get past the 12th fret, you're just repeating what's down here. So... Let's talk about music theory. I mentioned both the A minor and the C major have no sharps or flats. So let's actually go over these notes here. On this first position, we have A, C. Then we have D, E. And we have G, A. So then it repeats from there. So I don't need to go down to the bottom of the top strings, but just to prove it to you, A, C, D, E, G, A. This one has to be, the next one after that, this has to be a C. C, then we have the D, then we have the E, and the G, and the A, and then the C. Now, in the next position, it's the exact same notes, just starting on the C instead of starting on the A. So we have C, C, D, E, G, A, C. And then it just repeats on, and every single pentatonic scale is like that. So no matter where I'm starting here, or here, or here, or here, or here, I'm still repeating the same exact notes in the scale. And again, there's no sharps or flats in an A minor slash C major scale. So I created this backing track, and it's barely a backing track, it's barely a chord progression. It just has A minor and C major. What I want to show you is that I can play these five positions on the entire song. Doesn't matter whether it's an A minor playing or a C major playing. I can play these five pentatonics and it's going to sound relatively the same no matter what. What matters is that if I play the arpeggios instead, you'll hear how much more suitable the arpeggios are to the playing. I'll show you how to do it down here on the fifth fret. Then I'll show you how to do it here on the eighth fret. Then I'll show you how to do it up here on the twelfth fret. Um, in this key, it's kind of hard to play it way down here at the bottom of the guitar. 
because of the way that you have open strings as well. I choose not to use open strings. I'm going to choose to use fingered or fretted notes instead because I'm better at fretted notes than using open strings. So again, I'm going to show you how to play the song here and all the pentatonics that can go around it. Same thing up here and same thing up here. Okay, guys, um, I'm just going to briefly tell you what I'm going to do, and then I'll record a demonstration of that. So first of all, on the fifth fret, we're going to play the A minor chord like this, and therefore I play the minor pentatonic on top of it. And I could play the minor arpeggio on top of that. Now, the C major, I, got, I taught you guys that it could be here, and also down here. I'm going to use this one. So if the C major is right here, I know the arpeggio is like this. So when the C major starts playing, I can play it right here, same position. And I can also play the fifth position right here. So when I'm playing the A minor, I can play this one there and also here. And when I'm playing the C major, I can also do the same thing. Play the A minor here. I'm sorry, the C major. I can play the same pentatonic. It's not even a major or minor. I still play the first position right here and the fifth position right here. And I'm going to demonstrate that now. Okay, so I hope that made sense. You saw that the first position of the pentatonic didn't change, and the fifth position of the pentatonic didn't change, even though I was playing two different chords, chords in the same key. But what I wanted to point out and let you see was that the first position of the pentatonic fell right on top of the first arpeggio minor that I showed you. And the third arpeggio shape that I showed you was this one. For the, and that minor, or that first position of the pentatonic fell right on top of it still. And also, this fifth position of the pentatonic is on top of this C major chord. So now we're on to the next position to play this song, which is up here on the eighth fret. So the first A minor right here, the second shape starts where the first shape ended. So we're starting the second shape on the ninth fret right here. And this is how you play that second arpeggio shape, right? And it went like this. Hope you guys remember that. And that's where it was right there. Now what I want to point out is, directly on top of this shape, I can still play the second shape of the pentatonic. Right? Now, additionally, we have a C major which is in the same place right here. And the arpeggio for that one, you guys remember is the very first one we learned.
that has the exact same pentatonic shape, the second shape. Two, four, one, four, one, four, one, three, two, four, two, four. So in the last segment, I showed you how to play the song down here. Now I'm showing you how to play it up here, right now. guys we're gonna play it up here on the 12th fret because again I don't want to play open strings right now I want to show you guys how to play fretted notes so <clears throat> the first chord the first one is a minor so it comes off this a minor open chord looks like that we put that hand there like it's a fret or like it's a nut and we move it all the way up to the 12th fret we're playing that a minor bar chord okay so right underneath that chord or on top of it you have the fourth arpeggio shape which is one four one four one three one three two four one four and right next to that was the third shape which was one three one three one three one four one four one three all right so we have this a minor chord we have this third pentatonic shape fourth pentatonic shape. Additionally, we have a C major that can be played right here. Now with the C major, I want you to notice that we're not moving the fourth pentatonic shape or the third pentatonic shape. When I'm playing the C major, I can also play that's the fourth shape. And while I'm playing the C major, I can also play third shape so there you have it we have only five shapes for the entire pentatonic to cover the entire neck and once you learn how to play the chords all the chords for one song down here and all the chords for one song down here or up here and all the chords for one song up here you can see the pentatonic simply falls underneath it and it's actually quite simple but uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to Okay guys, so that was a very brief demonstration of how you can play the same pentatonic in the key on the entire fretboard, all five positions, because the A minor and C major are the same key. As we progress in this, uh, this endeavor, you're going to see why the arpeggio shape help you change um, from one chord to another easier. As of right now, uh, in this backing track example, you're playing the same chord for so long. I wanted to show you how the pentatonic shapes go on top of the arpeggios on top of the chords. But when you go on to regular chord progressions, you change chords much faster and you're gonna find that doing the arpeggio shapes is gonna get you there much faster and you can always add the pentatonics on top. There's nothing wrong with pentatonics as long as you use them properly and um, skillfully. 
So that's what this demonstration was for, to show you that pentatonics do sound great. They're a very useful tool, and so are the diatonics, which we'll get into next, but not yet. Before I show you diatonics, I'm going to show you bends. After we do a few examples on um, other backing tracks with chord progressions, I'm going to show you how the pentatonics go on top of those arpeggios, on top of those chords, and how it all melts together and creates uh, the sound that you want. You get to cater your sound how you like. Uh, I think that's really about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. hope you got something out of it. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment or email me at rectorarendale.com. I'm really grateful for you guys paying attention and watching these videos. Um, I just hope that I'm presenting it in a way that is tangible because it took a long time for all this to come to fruition. It took a long time for it to actually make sense in my head. And I think it's going to actually improve a lot of people's abilities very, very quickly. It makes the learning curve much, much, much faster. So uh, once again, thanks for watching. Be well. You know I will. Thank you. Bye.